605, we're calling the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting of June 1st, 2023 to order. Can we begin with roll call? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Hector Garcia? Present. Rodri Casares? Present. Mike Barua? Present. Manuel Rodriguez? Present. Johnny Narvaez? Present. Yushin Wang? Regina Portillo? Daniela Salapaz? Ana Villarreal? For the record, you do have quorum. All the guys are here. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a motion to excuse those motion to excuse here. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Moving on to the consideration of the approval of minutes of um, meeting May 18, 2023. A motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that. A motion, a second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, against? Motion carries. Do we have any citizens' comments? No, sir, we do not. Okay. I'm going to open up the public hearing. Moving on to public hearing recommendation of an ordinance, item 6A. Public hearing recommendation of an ordinance for the voluntary annexation initial zoning of R1A single family reduced area district on a tract of land totaling 367.99 acres, more or less, as described by meets and bounds in the attached exhibit A and known as annexation tract one, Cantu tract, located east of Cuatro Vientos Boulevard and south of Wormser Road. Yes, Mr. Chairman. For the record, the applicant is Vidal Cantu Jr., Cantu Family Management. The engineer of record is Porras Nance Engineering. The proposed use is single family, and the proposed initial zoning for this development is R1A. There were 12 letters sent, and at this moment we have zero for and zero against. General location, street view, 200 foot notification, aerial view, zoning map. Future land use, craft layout, and the staff recommendation, staff supports, and the proposed motion. Thank you. This is public hearing. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Wayne Nance with Portis Engineering. We agree with, uh, with, with this thing moving forward. We, we did speak with staff earlier about Section 2, uh, Capital Improvements. There's some language in there from the Utilities Department that's, that's vague and a little confusing to us, but we will be meeting with, uh, with staff and the Utilities Department soon. I just want that noted for the record, but apart from that, we're looking forward to this moving forward, and we're here to answer any questions you might have. Any, any questions from the Commission? All right, All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the schedule. <laughs> This is a public hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak in favor or against this item? Apparently we don't have quorum, so I can't take can't take action. So we have to wait until well, just for a point of yes. information for, for the commission. From here we'll be going to uh, uh, the <coughs> excuse me for to council multiple times. So we'll go for a public hearing where there'll be no action and then from there intro and final. So at this point, just recommendation, correct? Just a recommendation, that is correct. There's no questions for the commissioner staff. Oh, let the record show that commissioner saw that bus. It's present. Out of breath. All right, 609. There's no questions. I'll make, okay. make a motion to recommend that we accept Accept. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Moving on to item 6B, public hearing recommendation of an ordinance for the voluntary annexation initial zoning of M1 light manufacturer district on a tract of land totaling 60.16 acres, more or less, as described by meets and bounds in the attached exhibit A and known as an annexation tract 2 SKG Columbia uh, 1 tract located north of State Highway 255 and west of FM 1472. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, the applicant is Sharam Kaleri, SKG Columbia, LLC. The engineer of record is Bell Engineering. 
The proposed use is light industrial. The proposed initial zoning for this development is M1. Three letters were sent, and at this moment, zero for and zero against. General location. Street view. 200 foot notification. Aerial view. Print zoning map. Feature land use. Survey of the property. And staff recommendation, staff supports annexation and the proposed zoning. And the proposed motion. Thank you. This public hearing, anyone who speak in favor? Good evening, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the commission. For the record, Rudy Santillan from Pewa Consulting. Uh, we concur with all comments and we're in favor for the, uh, the annexation. Thank you. If you have any questions. Any questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak against this item? If not, what are the wishes of the commission? Motion to close and support the recommendations. I'll second that. Motion to second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Moving on to item 6C, public hearing and recommendation of an ordinance for the voluntary annexation and initial zoning of M1 Light Manufacturer District on a track of land totaling 31.11 acres, more or less, as described by meets and bounds in the attached Exhibit A and known as Annexation Track 3, SKG Columbia 2 track, located south of State Highway 255 and west of FM 1472. Yes, Mr. Chairman. For the record, the applicant is Sharam Kaleti, SKG Columbia South, LLC. The engineer of record is Co Engineering. The proposed use is light industrial, and the proposed initial zoning for this development is M1. Total of two letters sent. At this moment, zero for and zero against. Location view, or general location. This is the street view. 200 foot notification. This is the partner track to the one just before. Aerial view. Zoning map. Your land use. Survey. And staff recommendation. Staff supports. Annexation and initial zoning. And the proposed motion. Thank you. It's a public hearing. Anyone who speak in favor? Mr. Chairman, Commission Manager, Rudy Santiago Pebble Consulting, uh, representing the owner of the property. Uh, we concur with the comments and uh, are in favor of the annexation. Any questions for the engineer? Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak against this item? If not, what are the wishes of the commission? Motion to close and approve, subject to comment. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Moving on to item 6D. Public hearing recommendation of an ordinance for the voluntary annexation initial zoning of M1 Light Manufacturer District on a track of land totaling 0 0.058 acres, more or less, as described by meets and bounds in the attached Exhibit A and known as Annexation Track 4, Nava Track, located south of FM 1472 and west of Coal Mine Road. Yes, Mr. Chairman, for the record, the applicant is Rene Nava. The engineer of record is Federal Engineering. The proposed use industrial and the proposed initial zoning for this uh, development is M1. Total of eight letters were sent. At this moment, zero for and zero against. General location. Street view. 200 foot notification. Aerial view. This is a part of a track that's already developed. They're just trying to clean up the little leftover piece. Zoning. Future land use, layout sketch. Staff does support the proposed annexation and staff, staff does support the initial M1 zone. And the proposed motion. Thank you. This is a public hearing. We should speak in favor. Mr. Chairman, Commission Member Rudy Santiago, Prevois Consulting. We're in favor of the annexation. Thank you. 
public hearing anyone who wishes to speak against? <coughs> if not, what do you wish is the commission? Motion to close. And approve. I recommend. De and subject to comments. We have a motion. A second. Second. Yes, sir. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Moving on to item 6E. Public hearing and recommendation of an ordinance for the voluntary annexation initial zoning of M1 Light Manufacturing District on a track of land totaling 303.02 acres, more or less, as described by Meets and Bounds in the attached Exhibit A and known as Annexation Track 5, Need More Lotus Track, located north of State Highway 255 and east of FM 1472. Yes, Mr. Chairman. For the record, the applicant is Steve Lamantia of Need More Lotus LLC. The engineer of record is KCI Technologies Incorporated. The proposed use is light industrial, and the proposed initial zoning for this development is M1. A total of eight letters were sent. At this moment, zero for and zero against. General location, street view, one foot notification, aerial view, current zoning map. Future land use, sketch, and staff recommendation. Staff does support the proposed annexation. However, staff does not support the initial zoning of M14 for the majority of the tract. However, staff is looking for a different zoning, my goodness, a different zoning <coughs> along the uh, highway area of two highway 255 for another than M1 or M2. Okay. And basically just an item that, uh, as a use that would be a little uh, more complementary to the industrial park. And I propose motion. I just had a question for staff. I, if we put up the map back to the annexation area, I know um, along uh, um, FM 1472, the, is there like a Colonia area in this area? Am I, am I looking at the road? Uh, not in this particular area, no, but let me, let me bring up a, a map here that might help show the area. So here you have the Columbia Bridge, right here. Here's Highway 255. This is the International Com Commerce Ind Industrial Park. Walmart at one time was had a distribution center here. And this is the area immediately to the west. I'm sorry, to the east. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this item? Good evening, Mr. Chairman and Commissions. Um, I'm Andrea Leanda with KCI Technologies, and we support the annexation. You also support the, the questioning as far as the changing of potential zoning for the area that's off the highway sit that staff had mentioned? Um, the M1 light manufacturing, yes. Okay. Are there any are there any questions for the applicant or engineer? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak against this item? Mm -hmm. If not, what are the wishes of the commission? Motion to close and introduce as recommended. A motion. Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Moving on to item 6F. Public hearing recommendation of an ordinance for the voluntary annexation initial zoning of M1 light manufacturing district on a tract of land totaling 1.0317 acres, more or less, as described by meets and bounds in the attached exhibit, exhibit A and known as annexation track 6, Gilpin track, located west of FM 1472 and north of Vidal. Road. Mr. Chairman, for the record, the applicant is Robert J. Gilpin, who is also the engineer of record. Uh, the proposed use is light industrial, and the proposed initial zoning for this development is M1. Two letters were sent. At this time, zero for and zero against. General location, street view, 100 foot notification, aerial view. Zoning map, 
future land use. Sketch. And staff recommendation. Staff supports the proposed zoning. And staff supports the, uh, the annexation and the proposed motion. And just for reference, this is a, a small cleanup with regards to the Pinnacle Industrial Park. Okay. So. This is a public hearing. Anyone who wishes to speak in favor of this item? And speak against it. If not, what are the wishes of the commission? I make a motion that we close the public hearing and uh, approve staff recommendation. I have a motion. A second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. Moving on to item 6G, public hearing and recommendation of an ordinance for the voluntary annexation initial zoning of M1 light manufacturing district on a tract of land totaling 373.0974 acres, more or less, as described by meets and bounds in the attached Exhibit A and known as Annexation Track 7, Pinnacle Mines Investment Track, located west of, 14, of FM 1472 and north of Vidal Cantu Road. Yes, Mr. Chairman, for the record, the applicant is George M. Beckelheimer of Pinnacle Mines Investments at LC. The engineer of record is Robert J. Gilpin. The proposed use is light industrial, and the proposed initial zoning for development is M1. Letter sent is 20, and at this time, 0 for and 0 against. General location, street view, 200 foot notification, aerial view, zoning map, zoning overview, future land use. We have the sketch, and you'll see the area that's identified as unit 15 and 16 on this particular sketch is, is the area in question. It's part of the Pinnacle Industrial Park uh, master plan. And staff supports. And exition and proposed zoning and the proposed motion. Thank you. This is a public hearing. Anyone who is in favor of this item? Favor. Anybody who wishes to speak against? I did have a question, I think, that for, okay. for this one. Um, these 300 acres, these are along FM 1472, right? Is that correct, Seth? They're, they're along the mines road area, these? They're, 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 a bit, they're a bit off the... They're off the line. Um, the only question is, and I know we're starting the, the beginning of the annexations, but but from what I can tell in the future land use map that was provided to us, and I'm not looking at the correct one, um, the area here called for uh, agricultural or rural and um, maybe medium density um, or light industrial, right? And we're, I know this is calling for an M1 potentially future zone zoning. So I think, like we've looked at before, Mr. Uh, Navarro, we got to really look at the land use plan if, because if if things are changing right and um, we're recommending different things than what the land use says, then we may have to look at that uh, and really look. I know there are some other areas in the south that we had talked about that were coming in also M1 because of the potential future bridge. So um, if this is something similar to that, then, um, then yeah, we may have to look at the, at the future land use map. Look at the land use map, not only, I mean, I know this is on the river side and, and there, there's this bend, but I think where, where you're talking about is the other side of Mines Road all the way down to 255 and then coming back where you have the golf course, uh, you have some residential development out there, all that area, we're gonna have to start, yeah, we're gonna have to look at a line of where to, where to create that buffer and keep it away because it does change as we start going out. Even though people think that that it's uh, oh it's mines real, it's it's all warehousing. That's not necessarily the truth. I mean, we invest a lot of money in a golf course out there, and we we have potential residents going on that area. So you're correct. We we have to you know keep in mind of that. Right. One other thing I might add, uh, Jed Gilpin, for the record, uh, we we came in before we bought the land uh, with a master plan to make sure that we were heading in the right direction. So. That master plan that you saw there is probably a couple years old. So okay. we're just acting in accordance with what was already approved previously on the master plan. Right. And then um, now these 300 acres, 
as far as access to them at, at some point in the future, once once it's looked at, they'll they'll provide a, some point of access to it. We we have an access point to Mines Road that's consistent with a long term plan that TxDOT has in the area related to all the major intersections. So we've we've checked that with them, and we're working with them to obviously in order to connect it to the road to Mines Road, we'd have to have TxDOT's approval. So we're working that with them, yeah. and then we have it interconnected on the master plan with the uh, rest of the subdivision that's already there. And the rest of the subdivision that's already there has several connecting points to Mines Road and, and other roads in the area. Yeah, I, I kind of noticed that. But those are unimproved roads, right? Some, some of those are there. They... One of them, which is El Pico Road, is unimproved. Yeah. Okay. Well, I shouldn't say that it's not unimproved. I mean, it's not approved to the city's standards. It's a county road. Okay. It's got asphalt, but it needs it needs more work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Next item is actually the master plan we're going to look at. So yeah, you'll have um, that to point out. <laughs> that, 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 that's it for me as far as that is really the land use map and, and, the, and the access to the on the, on the um, and As far as just a comment to staff on the annexations, you know, just looking at them, we noticed that most of these are all industrial or M1 annexations are really just one residential one. and happens to be in the south not necessarily anything else and that's I guess part of what's happening in in our development here in the city as a whole right just that's what it is at this point and um, and I'm, I'm trying to I was trying to look at the annexation fees and how those are calculated you know, potentially what that is going to be but um and I wasn't sure or I'm, not, I'm not certain on the on the amounts but it seems that there is a but, and I don't know if we're going to look at that later. Is it going to come in later to us as far as what those fees are and, and the park space and things like that? Or, or? I, um, The last couple of meetings, we, we were discussing um, meetings that we're going to have on impact fees. That, that'll be coming up. Um, because there's discussion on whether the city of Laredo should do impact fees and eliminate these annexation fees or not do impact fees and stick with this so that still has that meeting still hasn't happened but i do know that uh once that happens it will be presented to pnz you'll be you'll be seeing and and you can participate in those meetings right, too. Right. so but yes that that's an issue that's going to be discussed and, and just looking at what the annexation agreement showed and that was my question in order to is that it's increased close to as far as the fee of of a commercial or industrial fee is to a residential fee, right? As far as the amount per, and I think it mentioned something about per lot or per acre, right? As far as that, that is correct. So right. we work with the utilities department and they update their their uh, their data on a yearly basis. So we met with them prior to putting this together, and those were the fees that they gave us. So there so is an increase. They, from the they do the fees year. they give it to us. Yeah. Right. So when 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 it's calculated per acre, I'm just saying, for instance, right, a commercial one uh, a, a lot. If it's we can consider it as an acre, potentially that acre could get more use if it's a car wash or a laundry mat or like those things should be considered as well at some point, rather than an R1B lot that doesn't probably have a lot to water or, or, or you know or, or use that much usage, and, and the fees are, are very similar when the uses could be way different as far as the impact. Okay. So I think it's something we can definitely consider or look at or once those impact fees or annexation fees come up we definitely want to take a look at that yeah you're absolutely right in fact that's why they're doing the master plans for all this because they have to reevaluate whether the fees need to go up if they need to change the the, the price per uh, per acre um that mr garcia is the one that's looking at that but you're you're on point that's exactly what they're going to be discussing yeah, yeah. okay thanks this is a public hearing. Anybody who wishes to speak against this item? If not, we're the wishes commission. To the close and introduce as recommended by staff. We have a motion by Commissioner Garcia. Second. Second. Second by Commissioner Butron. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Moving on to review and consideration of the following master plan. Item 7A. 
review of the revision of the Pinnacle Industry Center Master Plan, the intent is light industrial. The purpose of this revision is to combine the former units 13 and 14. Yes, Mr. Chairman, for the record, applicant is FM1472 Investments, Kurt Cross is president, engineer Gilpin Engineering Company. The proposed use is industrial, and the zoning for this 106 lot development is AG, M1, and a portion is within the ETJ. Location view, aerial view, the proposed uh, revision of the master plan, comments from planning, fire, traffic safety, and the proposed motion. Thank you. Engineer record. Uh, on behalf of the applicant, we concur with the city's comments. Are there any questions for Mr. Gilpin? Yes, I have a question. Okay. Um, on the planning, I think it's, I think one and, or, no, or two, um, it says of the additional streets that they need a, um, it's going to be landlocked and unable to develop in the future. So do you have any additional streets or something that goes from Mercury to the we, track in the south? We, we do. If you, if you bring up the exhibit, um, one of the things we the uh, uh, counted on, there is a, a strip in there that uh, is not part of Pinnacle. It's actually part of my property, and I own the property uh -huh. below that that's not colored. Okay. Uh, do, we do, do we have one? Uh, Do we have it? We, we, we've accounted for that street with, with that. That's what it's for. That's what it's for? Yes. But it's not in this No. In this map, right? Right. Because it would, it would only serve the development of my property. So I've agreed with my partners that I would pay for that street at such time that we develop. So that will only bene beneficiate yours or them too? Uh, just, it would really just benefit mine. It's, it's just for connectivity of my property into the partnership property. Okay. Are there any questions for the engineer or for staff? But how, how long do you think this, once it's fully developed, time frame for this master plan? It's going, it's going fast. Um, right now, um, if, you, if you put the exhibit up again, uh, the, 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 the revision we just did, the, the, with the colors, the revision we just did was to consolidate a couple of units and make up the yellow part nearest the highway, which is the yellow part in the top right corner. And so that's about 317 acres. And the whole thing is about just a little bit over 700 acres. So we're already doing almost half of it this year. And uh, I would expect the, the next color, which is kind of orange, would be in about a year. And then the next color would be in about a year. So I'm, I'm going to say about three years. That's what it looks like now. If, uh, if everything keeps happening the way it's happening in the radar. Thank you. <laughs> There's no other um, questions for engineer or staff or with the wishes of the commission. Uh, motion to approve, subject to comments. I have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. Moving on to item 7B. Review and consideration of the Port Laredo Industrial Park Master Plan. The intent is industrial. Mr. Chairman, for the record, applicant is De Killam Development. Engineer is Mesquite Engineering. Proposed use is industrial. The zoning for this 22 lot development is M1 and M2. Location view. Area view. Proposed plan. Master plan. Comments from planning. Traffic safety. And the proposed motion. Thank you. Yeah. Engineer record. 
Hurry up. Mr. Chairman, Justin Heather on behalf of Kiln Development. Uh, we'll we'll second that. Uh, Kiln Development, DBA, Mesquite Engineering. I do have a, a, a brief presentation, but a point of order first. This master plan is also, uh, we have an associated plat that is 8C. I don't know, it's a, the same comments from staff, so I thought I would address it at once, but I don't want to take out of order unless. Yeah, if it. you um, have a motion to move up to listen to also um, agenda item 8C. Open 8C. Open 8C. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, against? Motion carries. I'm just going to read the, the item just into record. Preliminary consideration of the plat of Port of Rado District Court, Unit 1, Block 1. The attempt is industrial. Again, Justin Heather on behalf of Killen Development. Mm -hmm. um, with respect to the master plan, this is the, the overall view of the master plan. As the commission may remember, we were here in November for this tract here in the north corner. A uh, 39 acre of preliminary plat was approved. This is here the existing port drive. This is what we had discussed in. November was the to be uh, the future railroad drive that would connect out to the uh, to IH 35. The uh, plant that we have right now is um, here, zoom in. We have platted the the preliminary plant that's pending that is 8C is the northern port, the railroad drive and the portions north of, of railroad drive. As you may recall, recall there was a prior plat with respect to access for railroad drive to IH 35 here that was reported in 1990. Here's the insert from that plat. Now we overall, um, the, the impact of, of completing railroad drive and part of this master plan is the future development of Port Laredo itself. Um, the access that railroad drive will um, provide to H35 will actually alleviate the traffic and congestion on carriers and hopefully Uniroyal possibly. Um, per the city's request as part of the master plan and the, the platform block one, we are going to be looping the water line which will increase the water pressure in the entire area. And you know, the hope is that ultimately completion of railroad drive will attach, uh, attract additional investment job creation. We had speak, spoken in November about the parcel, the 39 acre at the top, that it's uh, under an option contract now for a potential uh, $115 million investment, as well as certain other tracks within uh, the master plan. We are in discussions with or under contract with companies to um, ultimately make future investments. Uh, we, we generally agree with the approval of the uh, master plan and with the plat, of course, but we do have uh, certain concerns and, and objection to some of the comments that are uh, associated with both of them, the, the same comments on, on both of those items. And one is the, the prior narrative with respect to the April 21 comments with respect to uh, Port Grande and the uh, need for a traffic impact analysis for, with respect to congestion on the carrier and unit roll drive. The associated comment under the traffic safety portion that requires a submission of a TIA and also with respect to the comment from planning with respect to the developer needing to provide an assurance that the at grade railroad crossing will not be closed. Before I get to the traffic um, point, the the item with respect to the railroad is well beyond our control. The crossing itself is going to be on a railroad right of way. We as a developer, once that railroad drive has been completed, it's going to be a public dedication. We're going to have no control over that. So uh, at that point, it's up to Union Pacific, TxDOT, and the city with respect to whether that at grade crossing is closed or open. That's completely beyond our control. So I don't under don't know what assurances we could provide because we will not control that crossing. 
Um, so next, when we go to the, the staff comments, what I provide here is just a, a, a comparison of the comments from the November with respect to the plat for the lineage portion and then the comments on, on the current master plan and uh, block one uh, preliminary plat. Uh, th those comments are really directed to Port Grande. They discuss the heavy congestion on Carriers Drive and Uniroyal Drive. And the notion here is that by having a third access, a new access, which is Railroad Drive, what we discussed in November, was this would allow uh, not only the traffic from Port Laredo to ac access I-35 through a different route, Railroad Drive, but would potentially alleviate some of the congestion that is currently existing on on Carrier and Uniroyal Drive. You know, the, the, the commission had discussed this at length. We, we had discussed this with respect to the need to improve development and to be open and accepting to development. And I think that this sort of a development is necessary and approval of both the master plan and the associated plan, thus we can get started or move towards getting the construction started once we have a final plat recorded for the construction of railroad drive to improve uh, the uh, rail or the access to IHC 35 and decrease the congestion. And so we respectfully request that the commission approve the preliminary plat and the master plan, uh, but subject to striking the, the comments with respect to the TIA, the prior narrative from April 2021, and the directive that the developer provide assurances that uh, Union Pacific and TxDOT won't close the, the at rail crossing. And that's my brief presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions technical. Uh, Mr. Seca can ask, answer those kinds of questions. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just, yes. uh, just a note, we uh, reached out to the traffic department and TxDOT traffic to be here at this meeting. Uh, we were told they were gonna show up, but uh, they're not, not here. At least I don't see them here. So um, they, didn't, they didn't show up and I know uh, Commissioner Sarapas had made that request, and we did. They did confirm on the phone, so that's where we are with that. Um, as far as the the TIA and talking to traffic, uh, basically we're just piggybacking TxDOT. TxDOT's requesting the TIA, and, and so we're specifically the city's not requesting it. Uh, we're just going to write TxDOT's TIA. So. Um, whether we just put in their text out on it, I mean, that's out of our control, but we just wanted to, we're not asking for two separate TIAs, you know, we'll, we'll use text out. Um, I talked to the traffic uh, director and he says, well, basically that's what I meant. They were just piggybacking off of them. So um, if you want to say, if you want to remove it, you can, uh, because text out is going to request a TIA anyway. So. Yeah. That was, going to be one of, that was going to be one of my questions. Okay, so that one. Yeah. What, what about the assurance of the, of the railroad drive uh, not to be closed? And when it is closed, what is, where is the backup traffic going to go? That, that is also, that's why we need TxDOT and all these people that are involved in these um, um, specific items to be here because we can't move forward or we can't un understand the big picture. I understand his his place, right, that he has no control of the railroad. But if you have three axes and those three axes, the railroad passes, I get, I think, by two of them. So they only have one way in and one way out. And I don't know how many times that the the train passes there, but in my in my warehouse it passes eight times a day, and for with ours, right? They they do stay in between fifteen to twenty minutes, but I know over there, it's a little bit more complicated because some of the of the warehouses that are there have uh, they leave um, the the cargo from the from the tracks, you know? So obviously he has no control, but what can we do for these these roads to stay open and be able to, for the trailers to be crossing? 
that obviously text dot has to be here to uh, to answer that question, right? Not, not a, I would like to see text dot here too. I, I'd like to see the whole presentation over and to maybe consider tabling this because you keep going back to December, the November presentation. None of us were on, on November. I wasn't here. None of them were here, so. The, the, we don't know the, the only the thing that was. happened in November. When well, they made the, the presentation, the master plan, all that. We were not part of that. Well, not, not the master plan. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to tell you. That obviously, we were all concerned because the area is not all, um, no, no está desarrollada completamente, y nomás hay dos entradas y están bloqueadas por, por las vías, ¿verdad?, de tren. En the TIA, like, or like the, the director said, is the TIA, he's going to be, he, they're going to have to pass through the TIA um, because TxDOT has to approve the road, right? Yes, uh, two things here. Mm -hmm. um, if you can put the um, back the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the plat for uh, Union Pacific, the inset, right there, not yeah. the, the previous one. As you can see, when they, the Union Pacific, uh, Pacific plat of the property, they dedicated uh, the right-of-way of railroad drive. So it's already a city street. It's a short section of a street, but yeah. we're just connecting to an already approved city street. Okay. I mean, we're not creating, any, I mean, we're just extending and existing streets. Okay. That's that. That's all we're doing. As far as the TIA, um, <laughs> I mean, it's gonna tell us what we already know. It's congested, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why Texas is already doing uh, improvements to IS35 because of that reason. They, ha they they have upcoming projects to alleviate the congestion there, and the projects are coming. They had a presentation the other day on that. Do Do you know what happened there? Do you, can you repeat? Can you tell us what? As far as what the improvements are for Textile? The, from there in that area. We would have to get that information from Textile. From them. This master plan has been here before. Is that correct? Yes. Or, right. Yes. And the previous master plan, this roadway railroad it's was already, not was it's not. not no, it's no, no, no. It's there already off of thirty five. I'm talking about this two. the new road that's being considered in your preliminary plan and in this master plan. The, the, the frontage, I don't know if you can pull up the master plan. The one before? This one, uh, what is it, railroad road? Yeah, it's just the extension of an existing short road. But but it's, it, it's not all developed from from there to the to 35, right? No. No. It's, it's gonna be developed from, from the existing intersection at Fort Drive to the existing road that was constructed as part of Union Pacific. The Union yeah. Pacific Road is currently there and you can get on that to go down to Union Pacific, right? That, yeah. the, that goes south. The only road right now currently that goes south, it dead ends at the no, it's a it's a D intersection. It's a driveway. It's, a, it's actually a driveway. If, can you go oh, to the area? Sure. Let me, say, I was going to ask. I'm talking about the, the road, the only road that runs north to south. Yeah, it, I'm going to uh, uh, this road right there, yeah, that road. That's that's Union Road, no? Union Road. Is, it's it's built up. Well, he's gonna show you. With this with this aerial view, you'll get a better picture. Yeah, Port Drive. Port Drive. Yeah, I'm talking about Port Drive. Oh, Port Drive is already constructed. Yes. Right. Port Drive is the only road currently that goes south, and it ends up in at Pacific. Uh, rail yard. Yes. That's okay. Right. And then the road that's going to connect from. Railroad. Port, uh, port, uh, port Drive to 35 is Railroad Drive, or Railroad, yes. right? Mm -hmm. That road is not currently there. No. That's that, going to be done when this comes in. As part of this. As this preliminary. As part of the plan. So if this preliminary plan doesn't happen, that road doesn't go in. That is right. Anything at this point. That, so, exactly. I mean, I, and this, I don't remember seeing this road in the previous master plan. It, there wasn't. It wasn't no, there. That's, that's why. The, we're bringing up the exactly. plan for approval. Right. So, and I know this area is very congested, and I know there's only two points of access currently right yeah. now, and they're working on the north one. But, but at least it's something that this area has to be able to get exactly. another point in or, or out, right? You can only go right in and right out. 
the the question I had for the master plan was is is there enough right away maybe in the future that they'll have someone can do a, 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 a to go over the railroad, right? Like the other two points. I don't know if there's enough space or going if on, going over it's the, to do to do that. But but you know, I'm, I'm I'm glad to see this roadway here. I think it's anything to be able to help this area um, to alleviate the flow, the flow of traffic. Flow. And then I thought, I you know, I also thought, are there any other areas that have railroad crossings that have some, you know, warehousing? And you know, I, when you start thinking, there are some areas, kind of like behind. Um, uh, Walmart on, on San Bernardo, you know, those old warehouses that are back there. There's plenty of crossings there. Las Cruces. Uh, there are some areas that have it. It, it. You know, is it the best thing here? I don't know, but but I know it's another roadway that's not currently there that I think would would help the area out. Um, the only thing is, was, was the question on the right of way to be able to have an overpass in the future once the, the other majestic, which this development has no control over what they do and, and what impact they have on this area. The majestic development, which is that rate race that way circle. circle that's thousands of acres as well. That's that on the fast track. Yeah, right that <laughs> whole area there, that whole circle there eventually is coming, which their TIA should be coming in to see what impact they're going to have on the rest of pretty much the whole size of Unitree. They are not making any development until Rosenberg has its its outing, so they could be able to connect through the back, so they can have flow through the back because this area would be very congested. I wanted to um, tell Mr. Garcia that this road wasn't in their master plan before, so they already agreed to do that road that, how Mr. Barron says, it will help alleviate, but we still have the issue of the rail right. road right. Um, and, crossing. So and, that's and why I think they're asking for the TIA, right? right? But the TIA, TxDOT, they wouldn't be able to do anything without TxDOT approving the the road. And that road currently, there is a stump currently on 35 that they have now, if they can zoom in on the aerial, that is already existing and it's a public road. Yes, it is. Right. In essence, we don't have to ask anything from TxDOT because as, as long right. as the city's okay with it. That road's already there and it's already utilized yeah, yeah. for people that want to go down. Right away. Yeah. And, and we also do have a maintenance and monitor agreement with the Pacific with respect to that. So, you know, we, we how, wide is, how wide is the street, Dave? <laughs> How wide is the street? 60. 60. That wasn't there, that's now there. The existing is 60. They're bringing in industrial plan for 70. But it chokes down to 60 at that point. <laughs> There's 70, and it's going to be a 60 at that point because of the railroad crossing. So, Mr. Chairman, yes. well, you know, we want to see this, this development work. Um, I do have a concern because if you look at Unit 1, um, that's that's right along I-35 at the bottom. Uh, the proposal that's been brought forward is uh, 900,000 square feet of warehouse in that first section to come in. So that's a significant warehouse. Um, you know, we're happy for that business, but at the same time, we've got to be very careful about the traffic because that's, that's going to be significant. And that, that would be, I don't know if you can see it, but it's unit one, bottom left. <clears throat> right along the front of 35. So um, that's already coming through the city uh, as being proposed to for, for this site. So um, and I think that's two warehouses of 450,000 square feet. Um, their only road will be this road, the 70 foot road, and they'll turn left to come out and they'll turn right if they want to go into the carrier. So um, they would only have a right. Um, from from to go out right and to go in to right, right. left. Right. So um, as much as we want to see this, I just want to be very careful about the traffic part of this. It's it because it's limited. It's only one road, uh, and that's it. And that's a lot of square footage. And that's just unit one. That doesn't. If this fully built out, I don't know how much square footage we're talking about to one road. And then unit two, 
uh, could potentially have double that amount based on it. So is, it's it's Mr. Arnold, but if they were not, to, let's just say they only do half of it, right? And they re have to redo their master plan, but they still have a right to develop in the area. Really? Then everything would be pushed onto um, port and back up. You already have an you have a master plan, and in that. 900 square feet warehouse is going to be in unit one is it true unit one block two but it's in the it's in the it's under discussion it's not it's done not deal it's yet. not a done deal yes well i now i understand where he's coming from or why they put those comments with a traffic impact analysis this means obviously they're going to need I don't, I'm not saying in your area, but you know there's two roads and they're going to need um, uh, overpass, right? So if you build a 900, feet, 900 square feet warehouse there, this I think that there's that's where they're coming from. That's why they need the TIA to see or text dot to see if they would be able to build a. a uh, railroad overpass. Uh, overpass. overpass. Well, you would need a little bit of, ¿cómo se un, un pedazo de terreno. Y si tú si tú desarrollas ahí pegado, pues no van a poder avanzar. A lo mejor por eso es lo que les están poniendo el CIA, ¿no? Down, you know, 60, the TIA just is just gonna to tell you the amount of traffic you're gonna generate, yes, and mm -hmm. we know and that's why that it's, it's gonna end up at the same place. Okay. It's not until text that finished with the improvements that are they're proposing, proposing. that all the area is gonna be better. Uh, yes, uh, uh, railroad uh, is gonna help because what when the train is out there, people are gonna take a uh, they're gonna take a left and then go up uh, the French road. A fluid. Yeah, and it's gonna, I mean you, you already have an inter, uh, a signalized intersection there, so in essence, it's going to help. It's going to help, yes. More traffic is going to be generated. But there, there's a lot of uh, border towns that are, wish they have our problem. Our problem. And they're yeah. fighting to get it, right? Yeah. And if we stop the development, then we're going to have an issue later on because we're not going to, we're going to be losing all these industries because we, we're constantly facing opposition to developments. Because of the traffic. But they're not, but, the traffic. But they're not going anywhere. They're still going to stay around. No, yes. There's going to be traffic. And if we're creating, we're creating, we know there's going to be problems. Mm -hmm. We know it's coming, but we're just looking the other way, just, oh, let this, this part work. But we, and we'll, think, we'll handle that later. That's why we're at where we're at right now, in situations that we're just talking about. Traffic is going to get worse. They're building a new rail, rail system, too, to cross. How many more? How many more trains are going to be crossing? That's going to tie up all these areas. If you go to try to go to the back where the old Coca-Cola area is, if there's a train, and the other day I got a train going one way and the other way stops, we're 35 minutes, and that we went through every from there all the way downtown to see if we get to the back, and it didn't happen. If there's a if there's a huge fire now, people are going to lose their lives because not because they have anything else, but they can't get through. And if they, probably, if they would have planned properly back then, then we wouldn't be in this problem now. Okay. So we're in, a, we're in a situation that it's great, but we have to have that peace of to money. make sure it works. Right. That's all I'm saying. And, yes. And Texas needs to be here to tell us, hey, claro. like you said, they're doing studies, okay. What are they? So we know that this is going to be at least three quarters of, of what your plan is ready to go than a quarter of it because we don't know the other part of it. That's all I'm saying. And one street is going from one to a little, not, not going to help. an emergency That's just plan. my, yeah, that's just my whole thing. Mr. Chairman, so, I mean, um, can I, I want to ask Orly, the, T, T, the, the traffic study is going to be done by TxDOT and the city's okay with them using so that? The, the, the request it, is done by TxDOT, the engineers would and that requirement's going to be met, and the city's okay with that. As far as for comment, for, for comment. For, that, um, for the, for the subject, uh, or that proposed to, action comment. In talking to, to uh, TxDOT, they said that would be. Now, and then the, the question I have on provide assurance that the, the, gray, uh, the gray rail crossing at Railroad Drive will not be closed in the future. Well, I mean, that's out of their control. And if it is, is closed, then they're going to have to go the other way. 
because they can no longer use that, right? I try to. I guess if it closes, they close they just have a roadway there at dead ends. Everybody goes out, and everyone has to go that way. Is that what they do right now? Awesome. Yes. Mr. Yes. Chairman, I have Dr. Ortiz on the phone. He would like to address the commission if that's acceptable. That ex yes. Is that sure. Oh. <laughs> sure. I don't want to hear it. That's <laughs> hey, well, okay, I don't know yeah. which. Um, which speech speech. Hello. The mic yeah, I'll put it right there. I think that'll work. Okay, well. Hello? Yeah, if you can state your name for the record, please. Yeah, so this is Dr. Orlando Ortiz. I'm with Killen Development. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I apologize for not being there. I am out of town, but I did want to mention something uh, Commissioner Garcia mentioned, that these guys are coming to Laredo. And I have actual knowledge that they're not just looking at Laredo, they're looking at McAllen, because they're also looking at property we own over there. So to just take the attitude and the opinion that there's no other options is not very good. And so I just wanted to make sure you all understood that. And we own, or not we own, we did a deal with UP back in the 90s to build this road, so we don't need a TIA today. That road's already built. It's already there on 35. And so what you all need to actually make a decision on, will this road help or will it not help? because if it's not approved, it's not getting built, right? And so would you rather have a third option to get out of Unitex, or would you rather not have that third option? So that is up to you all. And that's really the decision you have to make. If it's not gonna work for you all, then it's one of those deals that you're going to continue to have the same mess that we have today. And it's not a perfect fix. Nobody's saying it's a perfect fix, but it is an alternative route to get out of that area. So that's really what I'd like to say. I again apologize for not being there. And uh, I'll continue watching the, the video. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there's any other public discussion, I don't know if we can close. I'd like to close the public hearing. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, it's not, a, it's not a public hearing. So I'd like to make a motion to remove remove the comments of uh, of the date of the meeting and remove comment number one from the preliminary plan and the master plan. What is that? Yeah. I'd like to remove the comment of about the TIA, uh, about the TIA and then remove number one which is to provide the assurance of the railroad drive will not be closed in the future that's um, one under planning right run under planning in the master plan and i think it's the same comment on the preliminary plan yeah. Yeah. so off, off both so we have a, you, so i'd like to make a, a a motion to approve the master plan and the preliminary plan with the the striking of the planning comment on the master plan number one which is the 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 railroad drive will not be closed in the future in on both uh the, the preliminary and the master plan and then the discussion on having the tia now text dot doesn't uh, require a tia would are you okay with us asking for a tia if text dot does not want one. um no I, I just i'll leave it like this Motion. Why wouldn't we want? Why would we want to ask if the if text yeah. doesn't? The the only re, uh, reason would be possibly because this is a city street, according to it being dedicated. So they're not technically connecting to text dot road. So if that's if that's a technicality from text dot to not do it, or they can't do it because it's not text dot, then we're we're stuck in a situation where, what do we do? Do then? Uh, do we allow for our, our transportation department to request it? So we have a motion yeah. on the floor. Do we have a second? I'll go. I'll, I'll second. 
So we have a second by Commissioner Garcia. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. No. Moving on to item 7C. Review of the revision of the North Laredo Industrial Park Master Plan. The intent is industrial. The purpose of the revision is to add additional acreage, phase six. But we didn't receive B and C. No, we did. Um, we did seven B and eight C. Um, Sorry. That's okay. Yes, Mr. Chairman, for the record, applicant is North Laredo Industrial Park. Engineer is Topside Civil Group. Proposed use is industrial, and the zoning for this the zoning for the 65 lot development is M1. Location view. Aerial view. The proposed master plan. Comments from planning. Fire, traffic safety, and the proposed motion. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I was just discussing with the engineer. Uh, yes. He, he represents uh, North Laredo Industrial Park and 7C, 8A, and 8B are all North Laredo Industrial Park. And I was I asked him if it would be easier if we open all three of those so that he could talk in general on the whole project. Okay. So if I can motion to open up um, items 8A and 8B. So we're, we're getting 7C, 8A, and 8B. Yes. So then no. motion to hear 8A. Motion to hear 7C, 8A, and 8B, and 8C. No. 8C already got hurt. No? No. 8C got hurt, not with the AB. AB. Okay. So we have a motion here. Um, open up items 8A and 8B. I'll second that. So we have a second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. I'm just going to read um, items 8A and 8B into record. Preliminary consideration of the plat of North Laredo Industrial Park, Phase 6. The intent is industrial. Um, item 8B, preliminary consideration of the replat of Lot 3, Block 3, North Laredo Industrial Park, Phase 4 into Lots 3A and 3B, Block, block 3, North Laredo Industrial Park, Phase 4. The intent is industrial. Uh, good evening, uh, Chairman, Commissioners. Manuel Escamilla with Topside for the record. Uh, for the master plan and the preliminary plan, we, we, we concur with all comments. Uh, the, the one I <laughs> Uh, there was a question about Mercury Drive extending to, to the future extension of, uh, of Ruthinger. It will not. Uh, it, will, it will turn inside the park uh, off of Phase 6 for, uh, for the North Laredo Industrial Park. Mm -hmm. So uh, Mercury will not extend to, to the, the future, the bypass road. Mm -hmm. But other than that, just as a clarification, because that was one of the comments, we concur with all, all three of the projects. You have a question? Yes. Yeah. Let me see. Where, where's Mercury? So do you see phase six that's uh, blue? Phase six. Okay. Blue. So the, this, uh, this one, there Mercury. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's not blue. going to. It, it's very blue. close to the, what would be the proposed intersection. Uh, to the pin. Look, I'm going to, yeah. Okay. Uh, you only have within your park lane. Okay. Can you, can you put up, uh, but Ruth and your parkway is going to yes connect. Yeah, of course. Right? Yes, ma'am. So you have two exits. Yes, ma'am. That's what that's the main our main concern. So we have the Rosenberg 
Ruth and Jure Parkway to Highway 35, and then Ruth and Jure Parkway to a charter. Yes. So the, the, this screen is, is, is mislabeled. Mercury here is not Mercury. That, that's Ruth and Jure on the screen here. So Mercury is the north-south road. So that's the road that we're going to be turning internally. But yes, you're right. Ruthinger and then Ruthinger Parkway. It goes like Parkway this, and then be, we'll both be connected. Would be connected. Okay. Perfect. Got it. If we could just take the, the motions for each one separately. Yes. Are there any other questions for um, Mr. Engineer Record mm -hmm. or for staff on okay. item seven C? No. If not, uh, we'll move to the commission for item 7C. Motion to close and introduce this. We have a motion second. by Commissioner Garcia and a second by Commissioner Salabas. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Um, let's go ahead and um, action on item 8A. And what? He wants us to vote on each one individually, so from item 8A, there's no other questions or comments. No, I'll make a motion that we approve it with staff recommendations. Second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. And um, for item 8B? Motion to close and introduce. For a motion, recommended. A second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Yeah, moving on to item 8D, preliminary consideration of the plat of lot 2, block 1, the codes at Winfield, commercial unit 1, the attempt is commercial. Just, just, for the, uh, just a question to the attorney. On the one that we went prior to that, that we opened up uh, 7B and then 8, you would not have told the same way? We just did one motion. This one we did two. I mean, technically, it's fine. That's right, fine. But just for clarity, it's probably better to just do them separate. But. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for the record, the applicant is Killam Development, Engineer Mesquite Engineering. Proposed use is commercial. The zoning for this one lot development is R1. Location view, aerial view, street view. The proposed uh, plat, staff comments planning and fire department, proposed motion. Thank you. The applicant engineer record. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, and staff. Uh, for the record, both of others with Mesquite Engineering representing Kingdom Development. Um, we concur with all the comments that were issued by the, the commission. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions for the engineer or staff? Yes, I think. Yes. It, is it in the flood area? Or no? No. No, it's not. no. That's okay. There's no other questions for the rest of the commission? Motion to approve subject to comments. Motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Moving on to item 8E. Preliminary consideration of Killam, the Coast Billboard number 3 plat, the intense commercial billboard. Yes. Uh, for the record, is Charco Land Sales. Engineer uh, is Mesquite Engineering, once again. Proposed use is commercial. There's only for this one, not, one not development is R1. Location view. Street view. Sorry, the aerial view, street view, the proposed plat for the billboard, Second comments, planning, the proposed motion. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner, members of staff, Vince Martinez, uh, representative of Chaco Land Sales and Mesquite Engineering, and we can comments. Thank you. There's no questions from engineer staff? No. Motion to close and recommend as recommended. 
We have a motion yeah. and a second. All in favor? Aye. Against? The motion carries. Moving on to item 8F. Preliminary, cons preliminary consideration of Lot 1, Block 1, in scope, plat. The intent is industrial. Yes, uh, the applicant uh, for this project is uh, INSCO dis uh, Distribution. Engineer is Ricardo Ramos. Proposed use is industrial. The zoning for this one on development is M1. Location view. Aerial view. Street view. Proposed plat. Staff comments planning. And the proposed motion. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Ricardo Ramos with Durad Engineering, and uh, we agree with staff recommendations. Thank you. Are there any questions from the commission for the engineer or staff? If not, what do you wish, commission? Motion to approve, subject to comments. We have a motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against, motion carries. Moving on to item 8G, preliminary consideration of Resendez commercial plat. The intent is industrial. Yes, the applicant is Julio Figueroa. Engineer is Jeffrey Puig from KCI Technologies. Proposed to use is industrial. The zoning for this two lot development is M1. Location view, aerial view, street view. The proposed plat, South Commons planning. Proposed motion. Thank you. Yes. Good evening, Andres Rubio with KCI Technologies uh, for the record, and we can cover the comments. Thank you. What? No. For the project? Yes, of course. Um, what is what is going to be there? Gonna, uh, right now, the our client doesn't really know, but I think he's thinking about. Uh, a little a small warehouse and possibly uh, some commercial building. Is that, that is where um, Flecha Lane, Flecha Lane and, yeah, the realignment. Where like a hotel was there before or, um, or it's just like land? That, it's, it's next door. Yeah. It's next door to the other side. Yeah, like there was a towards gas, the 35. There was a gas, a gas station on the corner. Uh-huh. Well, you have Pizza Hut, you cross the street, there's a gas station. Uh-huh. And then it would be this property. Mm -hmm. And then the motel. Oh, okay. okay. So it's like so it's a line with Fletcher. A line with Fletcher. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, that would it would be a corner. It'd be a corner. When Fletcher goes through, it'll be a corner lot, and then it goes to the back. Because isn't there? Well, I remember there was going to be a Fletcher. Fletcher was going to continue going straight, and isn't it right there? And so, the owner of that property, he uh, he sold half of the property to the city of Laredo for the right of way. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he's left with a partial piece of property he's working on. Uh, yes, we don't have the, we don't have that one. See the, oh, yeah. the, the curve on the land, on the bottom, uh -huh. how it's curving? That yeah. would be Fletcher Lane. This, this That's how Fletcher Lane is going to go. Because Fletcher Lane supposedly was going to go straight and then curve into Las Cruces. That's correct. Right? So. This landowner owns the land right there by the curve. So this, to this curve, side. Right yes. Yes. The, right. This curve right here would be the edge of the right of way. Mm -hmm. Here. Okay. And then the square is his property. And that or little right square hand. is the property. And then there's going to be like, because they put a car wash and a jack in the book, or I don't know what other, yeah. to this side, right? Yeah. Of course. Okay. Thank you. There's no other questions for engineer staff or the wishes of the commission. Motion to close and introduce as recommended. Motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Moving on to item 8H, preliminary consideration of the replat of block 1713, parts of lots 1, 7, and 8. Block 1782 ED and New York Avenue, Checkpoint Street, Via de la China Street, into lots 1 through 17, block 1713A, lots 1A 7A, block 1782 A, 
ED and the realignment of New York Avenue, Tricon Street, Piazza China Street, three points of Village Platte, the intent is residential. Yes, uh, for the record, the applicant is NHS Laredo Holding Corporation. Engineer is Guerra Engineering and Serving. Proposed use is residential. The zoning for this 24 lot development is R2. Location view, aerial view, street view, the proposed uh, replat, staff comments, planning, fire, and the proposed motion. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, uh, good evening. Uh, Fred Gettin, Gettin, Yeah, we agree with comments. From comments? Um, you have any questions, then, Ms. Alonso? You got, got some neighborhoods here. Yeah, I, I had some questions. Just, um, I know it's the preliminary plat is here, and I know there's a plat note about, um, not a plat note, but a comment on getting the R1B zoning yeah, we're prior to the we're, we're, we're final. Right. That's what's the current right. zone right now? Uh, current zone, I'm, I'm not sure what the current zone is. R2. 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 Okay, so it's an R2. Um, the only issue we've had with R1Bs, and that has been brought up on this commission, is, is parking with R1Bs as far as it being an issue uh, for with other R1Bs that have come up before this commission. I know that's been a concern of this commission as far as uh, the over the overflow of parking, if any, right? The way the, the ordinance has been uh, written, I think it's supposed to have three cars per lot to, to be able to park three cars per lot in an R1B since they're, they're so small, right? These lots are smaller lots. Okay. Do you have a site plan or anything right now so we can see no, how no, those no, three no, cars no. are going to fit? We can submit it. We can submit one. Uh, so, or do you know how this, this is going to work out as far as parking? Uh, we would have to to see, but um, basically the, the it is what you said, you know, three three per lot, three cars per lot. Right, That's but I know the, the, the last time we had an R1B, they had to have the developer put the setback to 36 or no, 30 feet rather than the current 20 or 36. So is this going to have the same setback? No, we, have, we have a 20 feet right now. They have it at 20. We just have to be, my point is we have to be consistent, right? If, if we're asking other folks to develop in a certain way, then then everyone should, should, right? Or yeah. or keep it the way the ordinance is written. I, I'm fine with that, the way the R1B should be. Uh, uh, and I understand um, it's for um, affordable housing, right? I'm assuming this development. Yes. So, which is a good thing for the community. For the community. Yeah, absolutely. But, the only thing is, you know, for staff to make sure that there's adequate parking. Now, fortunately, I believe there's a baseball field south of this, mm -hmm. so overflow can maybe park in the outfield. But, but um, we have to be consistent in what we ask future developers with R1Bs on parking. You know, some of them have gone a step above by pushing their setback, making sure that there's an adequate parking, and we hope that this follows suit. But and when um, you say three, three per, per I guess per per lot, it's when you say the driveway have three, the driveway for for three cars. Is that what you're right? Saying? Whether it's a garage with two and then an, extra, an one. extra one, yeah. but enough space within the for three to within the to, lot to, to put three off street. to have on 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 the property three off street with three off street off, off street uh, three cars off street. Right, and I think there was an issue where maybe the driveways and other developments like this weren't weren't um, fully. Um, built out, maybe they just did it for one instead of the two that were needed. No. And I think that was one of the reasons why overflow in that need. Oh yeah, yeah. that'll do it, yeah. well, it's just only one, that'll do it easily, yeah. Right, so so I think the ordinance in order to help, since they're uh, a denser area of, of development, is to have those additional uh, spaces for those cars to park within this lot. Okay, well I'm not sure how you all want to address that. No, I don't know, let's. Yes, go, go yes ma'am. Good afternoon. For the record, Elizabeth Alonso Villarreal, I'm the CEO with NeighborWorks Laredo. And yes, we've, we've taken all of this into account. These are going to be smaller homes, smaller lots. But we, we do, we are aware of the, of the uh, parking requirements, so we will address that. 
at the building. At the building part. Right. That's what I was going to say. This is a preliminary yeah. plan, so they have to. No, no, and normally we would have discussed this in zoning also, but since this is already here before the zoning, oh. that's one of the reasons. That's why. Yeah. So, you know, normally the zoning would have happened and then the plat comes. But it does, and at this point, as long as you're aware of that, that that's the case that's because if the zoning doesn't pass, then the platting, you know, may not be a benefit. But, but hopefully that all works out. But, uh, yes. And that's what we have to work. Let me explain a little bit to you here on this particular development. The streets are 36 back to back, so it's not like a normal R1B, okay? So you have 36 back to back. There will be three parking spaces in each one of the lots, okay? So we have, you know, adequate, more than adequate room in this whole development, okay? Because of the streets that are already existing. Okay. So it's not going to be an issue at all. Like you said, there is a baseball field, you know, across the street. There is vacant land on the north, on the west side. West side. West. But the streets are 36, which is the big deal. Normally, when you do a development for R1B, 30. they try to make smaller streets. Yeah. These are normal city streets that are there. With three lots inside the property, mm -hmm. it'll make the development work very, very yeah. nicely. Okay. Thank you. 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 Are there any other questions for, for the engineer? If not, for the motion of the motion to close and it's recommended. We have a motion? Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. <coughs> Moving on to reconsideration of the following preliminary plats and preliminary replats. Item 9A, preliminary reconsideration of the plat of Pinnacle Industry Center, FM 1472, Unit 13. The intent is light industrial. The purpose of this reconsideration is to combine Units 13 and 14. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, as we discussed in the master plan, this is just a follow-up on the applicant is uh, Pinnacle Mines Investments, Engineers Gilpin Engineering Company, proposed use is industrial. The zoning for this 15 lot development is AG and M1. Location view, uh, the aerial view, street view, the proposed uh, replat, I'm oh, sorry, the, the reconsideration of the plat, Staff comments planning, fire, and the proposed motion. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. Judd Gilpin for the record again, representing Pinnacle. Um, I'd like to look at those comments if we can get them on the screen there. Uh, the first one. Um, we can provide, there's a property in there that I'm gonna to call to your attention on the master plan here in a moment. And we can provide the details that are necessary for that property to have access. I'll we'll go over that with you in just a minute. Uh, what I need to talk with you about to do that is the exhibit showing the master plan. The, the area in concern is at the top, at, that cut out in the property, can y'all see the heavy line? And so what that is, is that's a tractor that's owned by somebody else. And along the dash line going towards FM 1472, which is at an angle there, they have their own easement, their own driveway. And so what we propose to do there is uh, change the note, if you, if you would all agree, to respect their spa the spacing with TxDOT, which we're doing anyway. We're already working with TxDOT to get all our access points, and we'll respect their access point, uh, have the proper distance and so on. So that's, that's my only uh, concern about any comments. Um, what are the intended uses? You don't know? Uh, they have a radio tower. It's a, it's a lot for a radio tower. Okay. I don't know if y'all might not have known that, but it's a big giant, one of those big giant radio towers. All the, it's 10 acres because they have all the cables going out in all directions. Okay. Now, our, our concern with that comment, just, just uh, as an update, is we just want to make sure that if they ever come back in the future and want to develop, that they'll have enough right away width. Uh, to be able to access the property. So based on what we saw the preliminary was, it looks like it's kind of landlocked. So we just want to make sure that whether the access is off of FM 1472 or through your property, as long as they have the ability to develop and they aren't, you know, in a very narrow. Well, is that taken into consideration? They're basically developed now because they, they have improvements and they have their. their oh, they're, they're not platted, so. But even if they did, I don't think they'd tear down the tower just for the sake of platting, so. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Well, my, my thought on it is it's, it's, it's something that's it's got an existing use. And right, we're respecting right. that. Um, 
So that use was already there? Yeah. There's an it's existing, already there. There's an existing tower. Already built. Exactly. They already have their own road and they're, you know, doing what they do. So we just planned around them. And our master plan that has, has been approved reflected that. Oh, so okay. we, we came in when uh, the uh, property was not, not purchased yet and we went through all this. And so this is a pretty drastic comment after we already addressed master planning previously. So and I respectfully suggest that you guys consider that, you know, we, we have an approved master plan already. Yeah. Adding a street to it that wasn't mentioned before would be a pretty, pretty big difference. I think that's comment was there they, the last time. Do they have room to get out? Um, the yes, they have their own their own mm -hmm. road, and we, by by way of the the uh, easement and the documents, we have to respect that. So we're basically developing up to the edge of the road and keeping the road intact, just the way it is. So with steps, I don't necessarily. Can we can we see like an aerial? No. Sure. Is it, as long is as it? the they're they're not platted. They're using the their access road to get in and out. Now the the issue will come when they plat. They're they're gonna have Hello. to widen, but that's on that landowner, not necessarily this landowner. So I. I Ahí se ve que hay algo de construcción. I don't have an issue. With it. So your request, um, Mr. Gilpin, is to do what comment one again. The, the, the thing we're already doing, and I, and I would suggest that it would make sense for this comment, r respecting these people need a, an access point, is for us to respect the driveway spacing. They already have their, their lane and their, their access to uh, FM 1472, and we understand that we have to respect the spacing, which we're working with TxDOT on. Wh whatever the TxDOT comes up with, spacing-wise... That's we'll, what you're going to do? Yeah, we'll follow that. So you don't want that comment there? The one that's there. No, I think it's number one. Coming number one. Right. Get in by the end. That's a concrete number. Anyway, talk, tech start would, would, would right. address that, no? The spacing issue. The spacing. spacing issue. And would that be okay with... The, 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 to be clear about it, the difference would be that at this point we have to provide land for them that we paid for and they didn't pay for um. to go to their lot. And you know they have an easement and they can use their lot for what they purchased it for and they have improvements. So we would just be completely out of pocket on our team to just say, oh, here you go, here's land to build yourself a street or whatever someday. So that's that's what, that's what we're trying to avoid. Mm. Basically. If they want to come to us and, and purchase some land from us, by all means, but we don't really want to give it up. So yeah. the easement is on on the pinnacle track, though, right? It is. Do you know how wide it is? Thirty feet. Thirty feet wide. No, okay. So as long as they, as long as they keep the same use, they can use that thirty feet. If someday they take down the other antenna, then they're gonna have to negotiate. And what can we do to be able to? Protect because that's your your um, land, right? Right. Okay. Well, well, what can we address or what can we put there to protect them if they don't have that? Well, we're legally obligated to preserve their easement. Oh, know, okay. that, that runs with with our acquisition with your, of the property. Mm -hmm. So we we have to protect their right to have access. So it's the same. It's understood. And you're going to do that. We, we are. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. What are the wishes of the commission? So they need to just eliminate the motion. We have a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion yeah, carries. If um, there's no objection from the commission or from staff, can I hear a motion to hear? Um, it's consideration of the following final plats and final repats. If I can hear items 10A, 10B, and 10C. So move. So move. So we have a so move and a second. second. All in favor? Right. Uh, against? Motion carries. If um, I can have a motion of action, whether it be approval or denial, on items 10A. Approve A, B, and C. Do you have a reason? Motion. 
to, uh, to approve? Motion, yeah. Motion. Motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. Can we go ahead and read those items yes. for the record? For the record, uh, final consideration of the plat of Harmony Hills Subdivision Phase 2 at Rodriguez Ranch. Uh, final consideration of the plat of A and M plat. And finally, final consideration of the plat of Monte uh, Verde Subdivision Phase 3. Thank you. Uh, now moving on to item 11. Uh, 11 presentations, uh, 11A presentation regarding application for cloud approval. All right. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, we had said in previous meetings that we were going to just show you uh, what's expected of an engineer when they submit an application so that you all uh, would understand. And uh, Ms. Brunella here is, is the recipient of these applications when they come in. <laughs> so, she volunteered to go ahead and uh, do this presentation. And I'm sure she'll try to make it brief. Okay. Yes, two minutes. <laughs> that is brief. <laughs> Okay, we have attached the applications here um, to the packet. And we have an application for the preliminary amended master plan and vacating plats. Basically, in this application, we have the, we require the information of the name of the applicant, surveyor, engin the engineer or engineer, the name of subdivision, location, proposed use, which is either residential, commercial, or industrial, lots, area of parcels, um, if they need any, any variances or any public improvements uh, being made. We also have one for final, um, the final plan of approvals. This one's a little different. Um, we do ask for the same, for somewhat the same things, which is the same name of the subdivision, the applicant, engineer. Um, we also do require the five approval letters for the, uh, for the city departments, mm -hmm. which is one for engineering, traffic, utilities, environmental, and Fire. 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 Right there. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Don't the, 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 the only one that's here. Yes. So we do need those before approving um, or in order for the application to be complete. Also, um, with these applications, we do require or these applications and all related materials should be submitted subject to the application submittal. Um, no later than 4 o'clock p.m., 15, 15 days prior to the next regular commission meeting, unless subject to the requirements of a public hearing. Um, incomplete applications will not be processed for the current cycle. Incomplete applications shall be made available back to the applicants with written comments and recommendations of the city staff no later than eight days prior to the commission meeting. So we do notify them whenever they're missing, they have the um, incomplete applications. And within all these ap applications for either general master plans, um, preliminary, finals, we do require the completed application forms, evidence of the applicant's legal interest in this property. We have modified our, um, the copies that we, were, we would require before. Before it was 11 copies, now we minimize it to one copy for the plats, um, a 24 by 36 PDF form of the plat, and we also require shape files or a geo reference CAD file, which is compatible with the City of Laredo GIS software. Those two items, which is a PDF and the shape files, should be submitted through a high link that we have. And only those two items should be submitted. Any, com any applications that are submitted through those high links should be incomplete or are incomplete. Aside from that, all general plans and preliminary plans, final plans, we do require a site plan for all institutional, commercial, and multifamily projects, indicating the proposed locations of principal structures, parking areas, proposed internal traffic circulation, and access from public streets or roads, also including the filing fees. So within the general plan, which is also a master plan um, or any preliminary final, if you see number two, we, we do require all these materials and information to be in the plat as well within the preliminary plat application. This is a long, it's a little lengthy, but we do require all this, including the tax certificates, 
showing that all taxes are current, the deeds, name of subdivider, um, persons that are re responsible for the uh, preparation of the plat, so on and so forth. It's, but are, these are all the information that we do require that needs to be in the plat and the application for preliminary. And for final plats, we, do we, we also need um, addition to number three, they also need to provide number four, which is the PDF, the surveying and dimensional data, dedication, statement, and certificates, and the five approval letters from City Engineering Utilities, Fire, Traffic, and Environmental. <laughs> we also have um, the subdivision plat fees. So for the plat fees, for any subdivision or resident, residential lot, only for residential lot or lots less than 20,000 square feet, for preliminary plats, we do require, or this the planning department uh, fee for $100, and for final plats, it's $50. For residential subdivisions greater than 20,000 square feet, the base fee for preliminary plat is $400 and $7 with 50 cents per designated lot and or $40 per acre or any fraction thereof for tracks, blocks, or areas not divided into lots and are to be used for commercial, industrial, and multifamily dwellings. For final plots, we do uh, planning department uh, fees are the base fee for 400, 500 plus an addition $5 per designated residential lot or $40 per acre or any fraction thereof. For vacation of plats, it's $300 a fee. Street dedication plats, $60 per acre of street right away or any fraction thereof. Amending plats is $200. Extension of approval is $300. Plat name, ch plat name change is $150. And administrative plats is $200. Thank you. I just want to make a quick comment. Sure. I know that. Uh, Amanda, that was a lot of information there, but one of the things that she wanted to really stress on was the time that said four o'clock, and four o'clock is four o'clock. Yes. That doesn't mean four o one, or working four thirty, or uh, four fifty nine. <laughs> we should add this at the beginning because all the engineers right, are right, right, right. <laughs> Unfortunately, all that we do it. You got to tell everybody. You got to go tell everybody. We've got our, our one of our faithful engineers yes. in the audience. But, Thank you, uh, and they actually do it right. <laughs> so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It does get a little frustrating yeah. because if they piecemeal their application, they turn it up a little bit of time, then we become secretaries of their information. And then, then they're saying, but I emailed it to you and, and you should have it. And they're looking, and you know, <laughs> Mike knows this very well. Um, so th that becomes more secretarial for us, you know, when it should be all in one so that we don't have to be doing that and then, and then, and then they, the blame is on us they complain that you took too long to do stuff when they didn't or, or we accepted it you know and yeah. and or you don't accept it yeah. and, and they have to wait another for well, right now what they do is sometimes they send it through the high link instead of sending it physical copy but we don't have that at the moment yet in our so yeah. so then i have to make the call whether i want to accept them or not and it gets frustrating for uh, staff that has to they're the ones that have to so that's you why know. you don't answer the phone call. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> I leave. Leave. Oh, leave. There's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons. That's just one of them. Yeah. That's awesome. So that it's it's something that we we really need to enforce better. So because if we don't train them, then they're going to continuously do that, and and it's partially uh, me saying, well, I don't want them to have to kick into the next two weeks. You know, we want to try to get them in there. But, but they're doing it to themselves. I mean, they, right. they're yes. doing it to themselves. And, and, and the, the the submittal date, it's always the same day. It's not a moving target. It's, it's uh, like Christmas. They know. You know, like, they know. Well, they I've been know. shopped for Christmas. And, yeah. you know, it's always on December 20, 25th. But, uh, and then the other thing is, you know, they have all day. And unfortunately, it'll be 359, and we've got like 12 people. Mm -hmm. What happens is that we have to put this all in the system. So it just prolongs the process of clerks that are, or, or staff that actually leave at 5 p.m. So they have to stay. How's the process of going digital 100% or plus so, so we're, we, uh, we're there. <laughs> we saw a presentation. Uh, we're actually looking at how engineering is doing their process to, to, to see if we can save some money because it is pricey. And okay. um, 
uh, we're talking six figures pricing. Wow. And so, yeah, so, the, you know, we're trying, uh, we would love to go electronic so that a lot of this could be taken care of in our software. But right now we're, everything's hard copy. But we are, we are looking at different presentations. We, I think the city hired a great uh, technology, new technology director from the city. So I'm that's right. Can, that's right. So we might have forward. some answers. Yeah, please. hopefully. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for your presentation. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. You should have put it in the beginning, <laughs> right? So everybody would. Such a guy that was sleeping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wanted him to be here. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're, we're moving on to director's comments. Any director's comments? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just want to congratulate Ms. Brunella. She uh, received her master's in business management. Business management. All right. All right. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're happy for that. Uh, we want to welcome um, our intern volunteer that's with us, uh, Genesis Vasquez. She's sitting in the back. She's She's actually a student at Columbia University in New York, but um, she has an interest, and we're trying to convince her, but she still has an interest uh, in, in what we do. So she's been, uh, you know, kind of just uh, been at the office, shadowing. kind of shadowing, and we're just showing her uh, a little bit about zone cases, and, and so she's, she just started with us, so uh, hopefully she'll stay for about a month and then go back to school and finish school. We don't want her to stay here. We want her to continue her schooling. And then the last thing is uh, a Charles Ruthinger Road. Okay, um, I, last uh, week I went up to Austin to the uh, Texas uh, Transportation Commission meeting, and so they have changed it. it. It was accepted now to be an on-system road, and it's called Highway 84. Wow. So it's no longer a Charles Ruthinger. It's called Highway 84. So you have 83 and then wow. 84 right next to it. So it will. it is now uh, part of the state uh, on-system roads. Uh, so when do they that start just happened. It? Excuse when me? When do they start building it? We need it yesterday. So the state, uh, the state, the, the city's responsibility is to um, uh, do the, acquisi the acquisition. Mm -hmm. uh, paperwork's already been submitted. Uh, so we should see uh, that finishing up this month. And... Then at that point, uh, we'll be working with TxDOT because we have to, a new agreement has to be set up because now TxDOT is gonna be responsible for the for the road. But we, the cities will have done their part and then the state will take over the construction of the road. So um, then that's through our engineering department. But it, it, it's- and the, the state will take over bidding out the job and doing all they, that. They will do all that, right. So. A couple of years. Definitely. So. Uh, Mr. Ramado, just a, a few things, right? Like, based on today's meeting, as far as the annexations, right? It's a, it's a big thing. It's a lot of property. It's a lot of acres. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing for the community, for the city, I think. But it's a shift a little of what the norm is for us, right? Usually, it's pretty much equal, some residential, some commercial. Well, at the end of the day, it's it's a lot. I think um, it's something that we have to look at as far as land use, right? That's why I mentioned that earlier. Um, we can possibly, I'd like to know a little bit more of the annexation process, especially like I had mentioned um, the, the fees, right? Like, is it equal, right? Is, is commercial now, we have to reconsider what they're paying compared to what the residential, especially since there's so much coming before us. That's something that funding that possibly the city should be looking at and it's part of our role as a commission to, to look at and make a recommendation. If, unless, like you had mentioned a little while ago, impact fees, and, a, and I would recommend that we be part of that discussion of sure. what that's going to be about. And then the other, Chanel, I'm sorry, uh, is planned unit developments. I hadn't, you know, it's been a long time since I'd, I'd seen that type of, uh, of, uh, of those type of developments, but it's, I'm assuming it's based on need, right? It's 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 kind of the smaller development, the more dense density because of cost, and if we can take another look at how that process is happening, I I, I think some of the things that have been discussed is the review process, but I'm not 100% familiar with the process of the PUD. Yeah. So before you know I make something like that, I'd like to be more informed on how that works. We actually, when I came on board, we I inherited. 
a new ordinance for the PUD, and um, we're finding that there's there's some gaps in it, and we're trying to yes, to kind yeah. of bring it together. I, I I didn't know the basis of the changes, so we're kind of reacting a little bit. We're and having to figure it out. Yeah. So. And it's part of growing and doing some, and then eventually you tweak as you, because we hadn't seen all those developments. And frankly, before. we even talked about maybe even going back to the SUP uh, process to just bring it back because it was conf it's confusing a lot of engineers. Yeah. And, and not only engineers, but staff. Yeah. So, um, uh, yes, definitely, we can definitely do that because um, it would be good for you to see it. And then also, we could we really could discuss whether we want it. Is it good? Is it healthy? Is this ordinance, the way it was changed, is it healthy for Laredo or right. is it just making it more complicated? Because we have to enforce. Right. And, and if we're not understanding it, it, it just and, it's the and it seems like it's going to continue because it's of the need of it, right? it, it of the intent it, of that type of development. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Talking about needs, <laughs> talking about needs, we need the engineer, head of engineer here. We need TxDOT. We need every department here because there's certain things that we don't know and we need their their input on it. I, I agree with you. Um, I will reach out to the directors again and uh, we do we do call them. We do let, let everybody know. Joanne does call them to remind them that we have a meeting. Um, I just have to keep pushing the fact that the commission is actually wanting them here. So I will continue. I know pastel. It, it would help a lot in our yes. knowledge to our knowledge mm -hmm. because a lot of us um, 2021 I wasn't I wasn't here and a lot of them weren't here in 2022 so obviously you can't um, um, say something or make a decision if you don't know the whole picture well, and frankly, you all make a decision, and if it, the director is going to, you know, be upset about it. Well, he should have been here to to talk about it because uh, it, it's very difficult for us, not knowing the background, to enforce what their their comments are. Enforce that, their yeah. comments, you know, so they should be here to defend their position. Uh, if if the director can't make it, the representative from One Stop Shop can can also be here because they're the ones that actually come up with the comments. Come up with that, right? right. So. They do have a backup that could be here, so I, I will reach out to them. And if one can't come, well, then the other one should be here. I agree. Agree. Good well, I mean, case in point, yes. Uh, o sea, ellos siempre están. Fire, menos fire. Ellos sí están aquí. Vamos a darles un premio. Darles un premio. Fire and Park, that's right. Yeah, Parks fire and here. Park are always here. Perfect yeah. attention. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yes. And legal. And yes, and legal. Yes, thank you, legal. Yeah. Well, if there's no other uh, comments or, and yes, parks, parks. fire. Ah, that's right. Sorry. Yes. Um, if there's no other comments or questions, uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Again. Motion carries. We're adjourned.